Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the advent of code 2022, day eight, tree house, tree top, tree top, tree house. Um, that's easy to say. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the challenge. Um, basically, what we're going to get is we are looking at a forest, and this the forest is going to be shown as a grid here, where the number is the height of the tree uh, in each spot, um, and the trees are all lined up very nicely, um, and we have that. So the question is. Can you see this tree from the outside? And so, for example, if you look at this five right here, um, let's see if it makes, um, it's visible. Let's see, a tree is visible if all the trees between it and the edge are shorter than it. So, if we look at this five, up to this edge, it is visible. Um, so, it's visible. Um, if we look at this three, for example, it's blocked by the five, it's blocked by the five, it's blocked by the five, and it's blocked by the three. So, it's not visible. Um, so any edge, if we can get to any edge, we become visible. Um, and so what we need to do is go through our grid and count the number of trees in this grid that are visible. Um, so, uh, let's jump over into VS code. We will use my gen day script here for day eight. Um, I'll put a link to the video where I describe exactly how that works, but, uh, it's going to pull down the input for me, which see if we can have a large, much larger grid than the example. And uh, we need a little stub to get ourselves started here. Um, I'm going to start by messing up, messing with this, how we read a little bit. So we are going to read in lines. That's good. But we're going to, I'm going to use this one line or just to convert it to a grid. So we can say line for line in. So now we've got the line. And for each line, we are going to um, a line, a, a line is a string. But if we treat the string kind of as an array, we can actually, um, It'll treat it as an array of characters. So we can actually call map int on line. And what that's going to do is it's going to apply the int function to each character in the line. In this case, it, all the characters are 0 through 9. Um, and then I just need to convert that back to a list again, like that. And that should give me a grid. We'll call this grid. Um, and I think that's all. I think that'll actually work. I, this is one of those ones where I'm going to want to test it here. So we'll do Python as I day eight input dot text. And oh, see, okay, failed. Uh, invalid literal for int with base 10 new. Okay, so it's hitting the new line at the end of the line. So we'll just do line dot strip. And that'll remove any white space from the sides. And we run it again. And now we can look at grid. And grid looks like, let's see, it ends. The last line is 3210101. If we come to the very bottom here and the very edge over here, three, two, one, oh, one. So it looks, I think we, we, we can feel with some confidence that we got the input looking good here. Um, so we've read it into a grid. We've got a grid. Um, now the next thing we need to do is loop over each. We're going to iterate over each part of the grid. So we'll come here and we'll say, uh, well, actually let's, we'll come here and say part one equals zero. And we can say four R in len actually let's i don't know if it really hurts us to call len over and over again but let's make capital r be the len of grid that's like the number of rows and capital c be the len of grid zero so that'll be like the number of the, the total number of columns and so now we can say instead of saying in len we can say in range r like that so now we're going to loop over the r's and we'll do 4c column in range if i can spell range C. So now we're going to loop over all the columns. And what are we going to do? We're going to basically just say um, part one plus equals is visible. I'm going to make a function. Visible. We'll pass it the grid, R, and C. And I think that's basically all we have to do here. I mean, other than write the function. So let's come up here and we will this and we'll do def is visible and we'll take a grid an r and a c and so how are we going to tell if it's visible well for one if let's see uh if c equals zero it's not an edge right so if c equals zero or c equals c capital c minus one or r equals zero or uh, r equals capital R minus one, return one. 
Okay, so we got that. Now, if it's not on an edge, what we want is we'll say if, and we can, what we'll do is we'll, we'll loop, we're going to do kind of a loop here in place. So we're going to say, how are we going to do this? We're going to say, um, let's, let's think first about we're trying to look left. Look left. So we'll say look left. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to say, um, we're going to want to get a list of all of the trees between the current column and zero. So we'll do something like CC for CC in range C, the current column. So that'll give me zero, one, two, three, four, up to the current column, right? Um, and instead of doing CC, what we're going to do here is we're going to say grid of row CC. So that's checking that one less than grid of row of column. And we're going to compare each of these. We're going to loop over all of these ones in the range. And we're going to compare each of them there. And if all of these are true, so if, so this right here, we can, we can think of this right here. We're going to get a list out of this. It's actually going to be a generator, but it's a, you know, a list where for each tree between zero and up to the current spot, um, moving in, we are going to check in this row, we're going to check each column from zero up to C. And if they're all less than the, in height in that one, then we will return one. Um, now we can do the same thing with like, look right. And we can say if all, in this case, it's going to be grid R. Because again, we're going to, and this time we're going to be moving, like moving columns again. So we're going to, it's less than grid R C or CC in range. And that's time we got to think about our range a little bit differently. The range is going to go from C plus one um, up to C. Um, and so we can actually, I wonder if it's better to, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll do that. And we can say return one. And then we can say if, and we're going to look, we're going to do the same thing looking left and right, or up and down now. So now we'll say if all grid rr sub c for uh oops sorry is less than grid rc or rr in range and so now if we are looking up it's going to go from zero up to current r there we go turn one <clears throat> and if all grid RRC is less than grid RC or RR in range. And then we just got to define this range. We'll go from R plus one to R. And we'll return one. And else we're just going to return zero. And so now we've got a function that's going to take a grid. Um, I guess we could add some comments here. Look up. And look down. Boy, typing is hard. Um, so now we've got our function of check if some if the tree is visible. And so we just need to loop over it, and we might have an answer here. Um, Eighteen twenty-five. Let's try it. Beautiful part two. I click it. Okay, so content with the amount of cover available, now they need to know the best spot to build. So they'd like to be able to see a lot of trees. To measure the viewing distance from a given tree, look up, down, left, and right, and stop if you reach an edge or at the first tree that is the same height or taller than the tree under consideration. If it's on an edge, at least one of its viewing distances will be zero. If it's on an edge, you can't see any. Okay. The elves don't care about the distant taller trees than those found by the rules above. Pose. Um, okay, so let's see. In the example above, looking up, its view is not blocked. It sees one tree, that three. Okay. Looking left, its view is blocked immediately. So it sees one tree, the five. Looking right, its view is not blocked and it sees two trees, one, two. Okay. And looking down, it's blocked eventually. So it sees three and the five. So it's a two. 
Okay, so then you get its scenic score by multiplying together its viewing distance in the four directions. So in this tree, it's one times one times two times two. Uh, there's a better one down here, this five, which can go up to left to right to and down one. Uh -huh. Yep, two, 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 one. Uh, what's the highest score possible for any tree? Okay, so we're gonna do the same kind of thing here. Come up here and we'll do part two equals zero. Um, get rid of this. And we're gonna loop over so we're just gonna loop over the same thing. So we're gonna, but this time we're tracking the max. So we'll say part two equals max part two, comma, uh, we'll call it scene, scene ick score of grid. Probably don't actually have to pass grid. We can probably just pass RC, but. Um, all right, so now if we just pass it, if we can just define what a scenic score is, we'll be done. So we'll come over here and we will create another function. Uh, def scenic score grid RC. So how are we gonna calculate the uh, scenic score? Well, we know, for, we'll, let's, we can do the same thing we did before. If it's on an edge, the scenic score is zero because if any of the viewing distances are zero, we multiply them together, we're gonna get zero. So we can say uh, if C equals zero or C equals C minus one or r equals zero or r equals r minus one return zero and this is important because when we start looping over things we if you hit an edge it counts differently than if it doesn't and so if we can just get rid of these edges that's going to be a lot make our lives a lot easier i think going forward um you're gonna have you don't want to have these cases where I think we'll, I think my gut says we're going to see this where we have like a range where the range could start at zero, but it could also start at like negative one up to zero. And so it would like, we want to be able to, I think it's going to screw it up. We'll, we'll, we'll play, we'll play with it here. There's no harm in doing this for sure. And it'll make it faster if nothing else. Okay. So let's do like four, um, let's do like a change in C in range. And now what we want to do is we want to go, um, for, we want to go for we want to step from the tree and we want to go how many spa how many possible trees are there between the edge where it currently is in the edge and so if i'm three let's 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 make up a little play tree actually let's get the example back up here um i don't know if we'll use it but we'll just grab this right here and we can do file ex.text paste this in so if we're at this tree right here we want to check we, we're starting at zero, one, two. So this is column two. We want to check column one or two, column one and column zero. Um, so let's do this. Uh, at yes, text. We have it done. Let's save this. Okay. Um, so I can go back to here. So what we want to do now is we want to have for this for we want to have from a range. This is going to have it's going to go from one to one and two not three and so that is going to be the range from one to c plus one let's see if that's the case so if this is the case down here c is two we want we want the range to go one two and then stop when it gets to three so that's going to work right and we're going to say if grid sub r sub c minus dc is greater than or equal to grid of R C. If that's the case, we'll break. Because we hit a tree, we gotta stop. We've hit the tree, we've hit the they've hit the breaking point. And now we can say left equals DC. Because so in this case, right, we start here. We go to our we go to our loop. In the first loop, DC is one. We now check this one right here. It's not greater than or equal to the current one, so we keep going. We now check range is equal to two. Or DC is equal to two. We check this one. It's not true. So we keep going. But we hit the end of the loop. So we are done. And DC is two. Uh, does DC go up to three there? No, it doesn't increment, I don't believe. Um, if we go the other, so that works going left. Um, if we try this one with this three right here, we would start with DC of one. It would find that it is greater. It would break and it would set it as one, which is what we want as well, because it hit this five. So that's from the three to the five. So I think we're good there. Um, we're going to try something similar. So we'll say, for DC in range. And this time we're gonna go from one to C minus C. And do we need like an off by one there? So we're going from two, we want we want to get two out. So 
the total C here is five, big C is five, little c is two, five minus two is three. And we want rate and range will go from one, two, and then it will stop when it hits three. So that will not, that'll be good. Um, we can say if grid sub R sub C plus DC, this time we're getting, this time we're moving right, uh, is greater than or equal to grid RC. That, and we will break, break, and we'll say right equals DC. So what we're doing is we're just continuing to loop and getting our different sides. So now we'll say for DR in range, this is gonna look very similar to the one up above, R plus one. If grid R minus DR of C is greater than or equal to grid of R C, break, and this will be top equals DR. We got one more to do for DR in range one comma R minus R if grid R plus DR C is greater than or equal to grid R C break and we get bottom equals DR. Now we just return left times right times top times bottom. And I think, well, let's see how we did. Almost certainly we made some errors or something, but we'll give it a try here. We don't need the I, I don't think, at the end. Um, whoa, that is a high score. Um, but I have no idea what I have no idea what's an appropriate score, so we got it. Awesome. Um so let's go back and just review here. Basically, um, we are we could probably do these as list comprehensions. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you if you want to try it. Um, but we're basically looping over every tree. In part one, we're just checking if it's visible and adding. And in part two, we're getting a tree score. And if it's bigger than the current one, we set it there and we store that. So we're always storing the largest. Um, how do we check if a tree is visible? Well, we just simply say if it's on an edge, it's definitely visible. If it's not, we look all we look at all the trees to the left of it, and if all of them are shorter, we return one. We look all the way to all of the right. If all of them are shorter, we return one. Same thing up and down, and otherwise we return zero. And how do we get a tree score? Well, if it's on an edge, it's got a score of zero, because that's what it is. If it's not, we use these for loops where we start looping, we start stepping away from the tree, starting one step away and continuing. And if we whenever we hit a tree that's equal or greater in height, we stop and we record the distance, number of trees seen, um, or when we finish our loop, we record that same number. And we do that all four directions and then multiply them and return them. So, um, the trickiest part there is just going to be making sure these loops are right, you know, making sure you have a plus one here, not an extra plus one here, that kind of thing. Why do we start at one, etc. cetera? Um, you can play with that a little in Python if you want to, if it's not intuitive to you. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive to me, but you have to, I kind of have to think it through. So um, I'm going to call it there. Thanks for sticking around with me today, and uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.